Soy Guba is a film that came out in 1964 that's directed by Mikhail Kalatozov. So, Soy Kuba is a $50 patron request that comes from Cynic the Critic. Cynic so far has a perfect record when it comes to his patron requests, because I believe his first request was for Seven Samurai, and I really love that film. I think it's damn near perfect. Then, I believe he requested Son of Saul, which is another film that I actually do think is genuinely perfect. And then now we have Soy Kuba, which is a film that I actually have heard about for some years now, because... An art theater in my city um, had a screening for it. I unfortunately didn't go see it because I just really didn't know much about it to really like intrigue me enough to go see it. So unfortunately, I missed that showing. But now that I've seen Soy Kuba, let me tell you something. I really, really dug this film a lot more than I was honestly expecting to. But one thing that I'll say just... Kind of a side note, but it's worth noting. I was a bit confused when this film's opening credits began. Because, I'm like, okay, awesome. Cuban film. I'm ready for it. You know, I I know Spanish pretty well. I probably won't even need to read the subtitles. It's awesome. And then I saw a bunch of Russian letters. And I was like, is this the right film? Did I click on the right film? And, um, apparently, yeah, it's the right film. It's just, this is a film... That's made by a Russian filmmaker, or, you know, I shouldn't say Russian, I should say this is a Soviet Union film. I remember I got a lot of shit for my Come and See review because everybody kept saying that I shouldn't have called the filmmaker Russian because it's a Soviet Union film. I think it's a little nitpicky, but whatever, I'll get it right this time because technically, they're right. I was incorrect about that. And at first I was just kind of like, perplexed by that, and I really just didn't expect that going into this film. And then the more I thought about it, it just started clicking and started making a lot more sense because, you know, Soviet Union are, they were a communist nation. And, you know, at that time, Cuba was on the rise with communism with Castro. And I'm pretty sure it's the result of a communist nation uh, trying to encourage it because it was kind of already on the rise. So with that being said, this film is a bit more on the propaganda type side. So that was something that I was getting a bit skeptical about as I was watching it. But I will say, um, that didn't really take me out of it that much. And it didn't really make me value this film that much less than, than what I was expecting. Because there's actually a lot to appreciate about this film. And I think when it comes to the whole propaganda thing, it's, it's probably one of the more fairest propaganda pieces that I've seen. That isn't just like totally false and just painting things in a completely incorrect and false way. Um, but it's definitely promoting an ideology and um, there's that. So just know that going into this film that this is kind of a rise of communism puff piece type of thing. But the first thing I will say about this film right off the bat because I just have to get it off my chest. The cinematography in this film and the camera work in general and even the directing but... Mostly just the camera work in this film is probably some of the best camera work that I've ever seen, if not the best camera work that I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, the cinematographer, I think, goes by the name of Sergei Uruzevsky, something like that. This guy had so much talent because um, every single frame of this film is framed to perfection and it's not only the framing of this film that i think is just brilliant and beautiful but this is why i bring up uh the direction because the cinematography and the way that it moves throughout the film just like it captures the emotion of the of the current context that's occurring on screen because there are certain moments where certain characters are just feeling so much dread and so much pain and the way that the camera is capturing certain movements and the way that it's accompanying the, the character's emotions, it's, it's beyond brilliant. Like, it really makes you feel the emotion in this film. And it's through those aesthetic choices that really elevated this film and really made me enjoy it that much more. So just go into this film knowing that the cinematography in this film is absolutely stunning. It will probably be some of the best camera work that you'll ever see. And honestly, I can see someone like um, Emmanuel Lubezki, the cinematographer for The Revenant, and Birdman, and Gravity, Itamama Tambien, The Tree of Life, The Cat in the Hat. 
Just kidding. Uh, well, actually, I'm not kidding. He actually did shoot the cat in the hat. I'm just saying that's not that is not an accurate representation of the kind of work he can do. But yeah, I can see someone like him getting inspiration from a film like this. I mean, I have no idea if he's seen this film or if he did get inspiration from it, but the kind of camera work style reminded me a lot of his work because there's a lot of one shot takes throughout this film. And just the way the, the camera slowly pans and moves throughout the film, the way it just goes in and out of, of buildings and just the way it weaves through objects. And it just reminded me a lot of his kind of style. But this film's interesting because it's not like a film that necessarily has like a first, second, and third act structure. I mean, it technically does. I mean, you can, you can definitely divide it in that way and have it make sense. But it's really just four short stories and each short story kind of elevates and escalates in a way to where like the rise of socialism or communism and the whole uh uh the whole revolution thing is kind of more predominant but let me just say this there's the first two short stories in this film i thought were the strongest if i had to nitpick anything it would just be some of the audio dubbing because it's kind of off there's this one nightclub scene where it's just like really apparent like in the first short story where like the audio dubbing is just like totally not in sync with what's happening. But you know, I would hate to really nitpick it for that because you know, it is kind of old and um, it wasn't really enough to, to, to make me not appreciate the film and I'll appreciate the story that was presented. But you know, it's there. So I guess in a way it's not perfect, but in a sense, I just feel like I got so much out of them that to me it feels like they are perfect. The second short story takes place in this farm and it pretty much follows this one uh, sugarcane farmer and the way it presents his story and the way that it uses montage to convey the kind of backstory of this farmer was... Honestly, some of those brilliant filmmaking that I've seen in a very long time. I was just absolutely wowed by it. Um, because it's not only like the aesthetic and how it's put together that makes me really admire it, but just the way that it goes through the uh, sequence of events throughout that montage and how natural it felt to the film was, um, it was really, really something. And it really is some of the most impressive shit that I've seen in a long time. So the uh, sugarcane farmer story, the, the, the second short story was my favorite short story in the film. Um, that one is definitely perfect. Now the third and fourth short story, I obviously don't think they're as good as the first two, but like the third short story is pretty good. Like it's definitely pretty damn solid and I enjoyed quite a bit of it, but it felt a little bit draggy and also I really just wasn't as invested in the central character it was kind of presenting in that short story and I don't think there was as much there to uh, kind of keep me as engaged as I was in the previous two and it's also not I don't think it's nearly as insightful as a previous two but it is still great um, I would probably give it an 8 out of 10 just the third short story then you got the fourth short story that is solid but honestly it might be my least favorite and I, I might be alone in saying that because i think there's a lot of people out there who love just the last segment of this film and again i think it is effective ultimately and i think i like the second half of it better than the first half i think like the first half of it again kind of like the third short story i think it kind of drags a little bit and it kind of it kind of made me not that interested to find out what was gonna where what it was gonna lead up to and since this film is going, you know, on that track, you can kind of predict where it's going to go. So in that sense, it was a bit predictable. And then on top of the fact that I think it was just a bit too long. Um, I think both of the last short stories, both the third and the fourth one, are just a little bit too long. And I think are just dragged out a little bit. But they're both still really effective. And honestly, I'm just comparing them to how great the first two segments were. Because again, I think like the first two segments are pretty damn perfect. It's just the last two um they i do have some sort of issue with them it's just that the first two not only do i think the direction the camera work and the overall execution of it is a, a bit superior but just the concepts of them are much more engrossing and a lot more insightful because you get to kind of 
get intimate with these people's lives and see the consequences of just untamed vulture capitalism and just straight greed can have on these types of people who are just working day to day to try to, you know, feed their families and make it. And, you know, in that sense is why I don't think this film is completely dishonest because, you know, this film does demonstrate the fact if you have completely unregulated capitalism where you can just take advantage and exploit, you know, the average worker, um, it can have some devastating consequences that in turn lead to something like the rise of Fidel Castro. I just think it was able to demonstrate that point incredibly well, despite the fact that, yes, this is definitely trying to get everybody to, you know, be on board with the rise of socialism and communism. One other aspect of this film that I really enjoyed and admired was its use of narration, because this film is narrated by somebody, but it's more of it's more of an entity than it is a somebody because it's basically like the personification of Cuba that is talking to you throughout this film. And basically what they chose as its, um, as its personification is this kind of wise woman. And, um, I just think that it was a really neat and creative choice that never took me out of the film. It made it that much more insightful and engaging and I just think it was a really interesting artistic choice that um, definitely did a great job at not only being thought provoking, but just being an incredibly unique piece of filmmaking as well. And I have heard a criticism of this film that the Americans in this film are just painted as ugly pieces of shit. And, um, you know, I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's not the case because the Americans that are presented in this film are not redeemable in any way, shape or form. And that's why, again, I kind of say this is kind of like a socialist puff piece. But um, I think that it's a little bit unfair to characterize it in that way when it comes to uh, those characters that are portrayed, uh, the American characters. Because um, the only American characters that are present in this film are like these elitist, you know, scummy, capitalist, rich fucks who are obviously slimy and awful. And then you have the Navy, which is basically the extension of the military. And it's obviously just has those two groups to make a point about something. But it's it's trying to express the overall mentality of that kind of power structure, whether it's the military or the elites. So I don't think it's like completely unfair with what it did. Because it's not like they have they had like average Americans in this movie and they were all just like, you know, horrible pieces of shit. They're obviously belonged to a body or a or a body of power that um, is definitely corrupt in a way. So they wanted to kind of demonstrate that point. I really wish this was on Criterion or something because I don't think this has gotten like a proper remastered version of it, which is a bummer because I would really love to see that dubbing fixed in this film because... I'm pretty sure that's something that's not that difficult to fix when you're trying to remaster it. So I would love to see if I would love to see a remastered version of this film and restore it in that way to where all the audio issues are fixed because I think it could really elevate the film. Either way, as I said, brilliant cinematography, some of the best I've ever seen. The direction is quite astonishing as well. And um, the first two short stories, I think, are either perfect or damn near perfect. So I'm going to give Soy Cuba a strong, strong 8 out of 10. I'm going to try my best to stop with like the decimals because honestly, I don't, I don't watch a lot of YMS, but um, my Discord chat does and they've kind of mostly adopted the rating of doing the soft and the solid and the strong. And I think that's maybe a better metric to do it. So I'm going to try my best to kind of stick to that kind of metric. So in other words, it's really, really close to a 9. And if I did give it a decimal rating, it would have been like an 8.8 .8 or 8.9. But um, that's what I got to say about Soy Cuba, or I am Cuba. That's the translation. And um, I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen this film or even heard of it. Um, I've never had any of you guys actually recommend this film to me, so I am really just curious to know how many people have already seen this film or, or have even heard about it. So, um, I would love to hear all your thoughts. If you have seen it, let me know your thoughts in the comment section per usual. If you haven't seen it, still comment below and let me know your thoughts about 
what your expectations are going into it or just comment because I like getting comments and I want to read all of them. But anyway, thank you so much for watching my review for Soy Cuba. If you really liked what you heard, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.